one of the most important technological advances of this century came ninety years ago in an old farmhouse overlooking lake michigan where william marion burton a can who was a chemist for standard oil figured out how to launch the modern petrochemical industry he understood that this new contraption called the automobile was about to create this huge demand for petroleum products and he understood that he had to squeeze more power from every molecule of petroleum. And because he did that, we had the prosperity we enjoyed and we have many of the challenges we face today because of what he did in that small place so long ago. This paved the way for the automobile era. It showed us the power of science to change the paradigms which govern our world. And on the verge of the 21st century, we may be nearing a similar break, a technological fix that can help us to meet our economic challenges, maintain our security, sustain our prosperity, and ease the threat of global warming. Science will be the key to our progress. If we can make the raw material of tomorrow's economy living renewable resources instead of fossil fuels which pollute the atmosphere and warm the planet. The future of our children and our grandchildren, the likelihood that there will be more prosperity and peace, the likelihood that all these sort of sci-fi road warrior movies about the 21st century will be nothing more than a figment of someone's imagination, all that will be far greater. A hundred years from now, people will look back on this time and compare it to the time when Mr. Burton figured out how to get more out of every petroleum model if we do our jobs. Now, if you look at what's going on with trees and plants today, it's very impressive. And it's already been discussed here at the podium, but once we used only a seed or a kernel, tossed away the rest, now we're learning how to use entire plants. Microscopic cells are being put to work as tiny factories. They convert crops and even waste into a vast array of food, uh, fuel and material. Everything from paints to pharmaceuticals to new fibers. And our ability to use waste in these ways will also be critical to our future. We are best served by new technology when we ask what we hope to achieve. And again, the risk of preaching to the choir, because this is an important, there's not a lot of controversy here. I don't know, therefore, if we can generate any news. But I can tell you, 20, 30, 40 years from now, people will look back at this meeting as a historic meeting if we do our job. Why? There are four reasons. First, the potential economic benefits are staggering. Not only for farmers, they're obvious, because they can raise raw material. But for the timber industry, chemical manufacturers, power companies, and small entrepreneurs like Amal. And the Vice President uh, is in Iowa today discussing how these technologies can help close the opportunity gap between urban and suburban and rural America by bringing new high tech jobs to rural areas which have not yet participated fully in our prosperity. Second, by substituting domestic renewable resources for fossil fuels. We ease our growing dependence on foreign oil. And because inflation's been low and growth has been high, no one is paying attention to this. But we, we are going to have, with the growth of population, the growth of population around the world, the increasing economic activity around the world, you're going to have enormous competition for oil, which will make its supply more problematical and its price much higher within a relatively short time, unless we do something to ease our dependence. It's important for our economy, for our security, for our environment. Third, as the Council of Advisors on Science and Technology concluded in a recent report, we can help developing countries with their own soaring needs for energy in ways that, again, improve the global environment and stabilize economies and societies. And fourth, as I've already said, this will help us to meet the challenge of climate change, which I am convinced will be the most formidable 
environmental challenge the world faces over the next twenty to thirty years